Okay, hi guys, this is actually uh, Obi from Occupy News Network talking about the, well, this is actually the um, Stop Hiring a Development uh, Vehicle demo and this is actually Malcolm from hi the there. local Green Party and please explain to me what's actually happening today. What's this about the um, Hiring a Development Vehicle? Why are people actually complaining about it? Sure. Yeah, um, today there's a big demo about uh, Stop the Hiring a Development Vehicle. Hiring a Development Vehicle is Haringey Council's way of trying to redevelop and regenerate estates and commercial uh, buildings within the borough. Mm. Rather than try and do it themselves, they've decided to put all of these these uh, these buildings into one large vehicle and go into a 50-50 partnership with a large private developer called Lendlease, who's okay. got a bad name in terms of industrial relations and how they deal with their suppliers. Like uh, Lendley, uh, Lend Haygate Estate. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. exactly like the Hagate estate. So rather than look at how they might break down the the, the, pa the parcels into smaller air, air, smaller parcels which are less risky, or com partner with the community and ask them what they want, they've said we are just going to give all of this into a 50-50 vehicle with a private developer who is only going to want profit, profit and more profit. Yes. If Lendlease goes under for any reason, who is going to pick up the cost? The answer is going to be the Haringey taxpayer. But the Haringey taxpayer hasn't had any say on this whatsoever. There hasn't been a vote of the full council. Tenants have not been consulted about this. This has been decided at Cabinet and people are, people's lives and communities are going to be affected by a choice made by a small number of Blairite Labour councillors in Haringey. We are wholly against this. This is not green. This is not the way it should be done. They should be talking to people and working out what they actually want. And they're not going to do that because this is a done deal. This is democracy at its very, very worst, and that's why we're out here today. Okay, uh, but isn't, okay, for instance, the Haygate Estate was sold by the council at the time for 40 million pounds. Yes. It did cost the taxpayers 60 million to actually get rid of, decant all the uh, sure. yeah. residents and to actually mm -hmm. demolish the uh, estate itself. Yeah. But it's now worth 1 billion pounds. Are yes. you actually saying that you're against profit? No, I'm not against profit. What I'm against is, um, Lack of accountability, mm -hmm. which I've already mentioned, not only to the council and other councillors, but most importantly to the community. This mm -hmm. has been pushed through without any consultation with the community. What we're talking about here is wholesale redevelopment of estates where communities will be decanted and they have got no automatic right to come back to these new places. Oh, so, people, so people are going to be thrown out to the four corners and may never may never be able to come back. There's no guarantee on rents when people come back, and there's no no guarantee when this is going to stop. Okay. Oh, so there won't <laughs> be affordable housing. I don't know. <laughs> Still to be decided is the answer. So so again, this is another crazy thing. What has been agreed um, is the high level stuff, but it's not the detail of, well, what actually are the rents going to be? What are tenants' rights going to be? All of that stuff is going to be negotiated away in the name of profit. That's not the way this council should be run. It's a broad campaign. The only requirement is that you are against social cleansing, you're against the HDV. So for that reason, the HDV is made up of quite a broad range of people. We've got people from the Labour Party, we've got people from the Green Party, we've got people from Left Unity, from the Socialist Workers Party, we've got anarchists, we've got people who aren't in any party, and at the heart of it we've got the residents. So I'm just opening my phone to get a message. I was meant to be here with one of the residents from the estate that Grenfell Tower is on. Um, so I'll start with a message from her. Um, as you'll know, um, we've been working for years now um, to fight developers, um, the corporatised housing management company and a Tory council who wouldn't listen to its residents. Um, this is a message from Thomasina who really wanted to be here. She's originally from this area. And she says, It's sad to see both of my home communities in London devastated due to the greed of developers and politicians who fail to listen to those they are meant to represent. I wish I could be there. Thank you for the support that so many of you have shown us. You make us stronger. Our struggle is for the memory of the lives we have lost. Neighbours, friends, family. Oh. At 
heart, our struggles are one and the same for our children's futures and solidarity to you all. Grenfell shows us what can happen when people's voices are silenced. The huge devastation, the loss of life, all of those future lives devastated. That was unique in scale, but the causes are common across this city, across this city and they essentially boil down to stupidity, carelessness and greed. It's with sadness that I'm speaking again in another Lon London Labour borough. And I want to acknowledge and congratulate those Labour councillors who can't be here today, but have bravely fought against the leadership of the council here. The leadership in Harringay Council have let us down, and in other parts of London. Borrowing from the legacy of Thatcher, failing to represent the people they should be speaking for, the communities who make up London and this area, so great, so diverse and so vibrant. Everyday people who live, work and socialise here. Who work in local businesses, who use local shops and take their kids to local schools. Across London, people are being expelled, removed from our city. Already, due to the Tory government, families, children are being forced from the capital as incomes, wages, security and stability is attacked. While prices of homes are allowed to rise to astronomic levels, far from what people are able to earn. All for the benefit of grossly wealthy international elites who know no borders, who see our homes as assets, as collateral for international finance and developers to literally make a killing. Shame on the politicians who are letting this happen. Shame on Claire Cober, shame on Alan Strickland, borrowing from the legacy of Thatcher, an ideology drawn from the Victorian era to destroy us of our rights. We're doing a deal with the devil in the form of lend -Lease, who have ripped off governments across the world. In New York, found guilty of overcharging um, the local government on a project there. In Australia, they left New South Wales government with millions of pounds and dollars in debt. In Victoria, they used illegal cladding on domestic developments and also hospitals. But we will let them know we will stop them socially cleansing London. We will fight the financiers and the developers who are profiting from our public land. We will know that this fight will be hard, but we are strong and we are getting stronger. So we will say to Cobra and other morally bankrupt politicians who are allowing this to happen, who are encouraging the social cleansing of London. We will stand against you. We will resist you. We will fight to our last breath. Because we have rights, we have truth, we have justice on our side. Um, I think the campaign in Harringay is inspiring and encouraging, and I think it gives us hope that we can, de that we can defeat this evil if, uh, and, and, and so destructive policy of re regeneration. Um, so I bring solidarity from Cressingham Gardens. We're actually um, a small estate in Lambeth just outside Brixton and we've been fighting the demolition for about five years. There's actually six estates in the borough threatened with um, demolition. And right now in Cressingham, if I'm honest, things are a bit of an impasse. The council are doing nothing, and who knows what's going on behind the scenes because they've actually, they're not even sticking to their own timetable. And I think that's a good thing um, because it suggests to me that something's gone horribly wrong, so horribly wrong that they won't even tell us about it. Um, nevertheless, um, 
You know, we're fighting to save it because we feel that this demolition that threatens us, that hangs over us like a sword of Damocles, is nothing less than domicide. And that goes for here too. We are guardians of the estate. We're, we, we are a community in a very real sense of the word. And I mean all estates in London. Now, make no mistake that demolition means the destruction of communities. It means years of misery and distress, years of uncertainty. It means early deaths. It means suicides. And we know all about that far too well in Cressingham. And it will mean rent rises and shoddy new builds. And it will mean years of the dust and the dirt and the noise of the bulldozer. Ultimately, it's going to mean a loss in social homes and a displacement of people from their support networks. And we've heard about that from speakers here today, so I won't say anything about, more about that. But right now, I, I would say we mustn't underestimate the scale of the struggle ahead. We face the end of council housing altogether. We face attacks on all the things that we hold dear, like decent healthcare, education, welfare, paying conditions, and you know that struggle. We sh we, despite the extent of it, we should not be daunted. And I'm just going to give you a few of the words of a great socialist, Latin American socialist. Julio Garcia Marquez who said we struggle not on the edge of life but in the midst of it and as in life in the struggle there is enjoyment so I say we fight and we fight with love in our hearts and that love is not abstract it's a love for one another which we call solidarity it is the love for our homes the love for our communities for our children and our children's children and if we do that i do not believe they can win against the power of our love this campaign encompasses the whole of haringey all sections of haringey we have the greens we have the labor party and despite what the council would be maybe a labor council but the both labor parties both hornsey and one green and tottenham labor parties are right behind us. They've all passed motions, they're all opposed to HDV. Every political party, leaving aside the Tories, and the Tories don't really exist in Haringey, um, every political party <laughs> is in favour of it. And all and all sections, we've got people from Highgate to Northumberland Park to Bullwater Farm to Muswell Hill, right across the Haringey supporting this campaign. And that's what we've done. We've built a community campaign based from the beginning, from the bottom. Right at the centre of that has been the Unite. Unite have given us a lot of support. They've given us financial support, they've given us moral support, and they've turned up in numbers here. Brilliant to see so many of you like marching down the street, complaining about this. And I have to give you absolute credit for the amount of noise, the amount of fuss, and the amount of anger that you've put out there about HDV. I'm a Camden councillor, and I'm looking over the border going, what are they thinking? And I've been doing that for about a year. And then I got wind that Camden Council were reviewing how they were doing their regeneration projects. Um, and I'm like, oh, right, now, what are the options they're going to be looking at? And I, I managed to get a, um, a PowerPoint from one of the secret working groups that were looking at the different options for Camden. And amongst the options, in fact, option number one, was a massive multi-site joint venture with a big developer so that scared the life out of me um i started asking lots of questions we held a public meeting in camden um we have the good news that camden have shied away from doing this they've decided to carry on with their current they, they're doing nothing basically just nothing different they're going to carry on with their current method of acting as their own developer they don't make enough council homes but at least they're not signing up to a massive multi-year gamble in the same way that Haringey are um, they said they said in their cabinet report in the end there are concerns around putting multiple sites into a joint venture um, there's a concern that the joint venture might prioritize more attractive sites for development and also that 
Uh, although it's possible to get partners to share risk, they will price it into any deal. And I think you guys are all quite familiar with how that is exactly the kind of deal that's been signed in Haringey. Uh, we've asked the mayor about this. Uh, assembly members have asked him questions, what he thinks. Unfortunately, uh, Sadiq Khan, the most furthest he will go in terms of condemning this, uh, in contrast to your own Labour MPs, he says, I'm aware Haringey's approach is not without risk, which is the <laughs> most faint and damning I can possibly think of for this. Um, but this is an important campaign. Like I say, you've influenced what's happened in Camden. You still have some very strong legal arguments to take to the court, and I absolutely wish you well. Council homes, now more than ever before, need to be controlled democratically. Big TMOs, big joint ventures need to be broken up. Local people need to be in charge of what happens on their estates, and that extends to when they're regenerated as well. We have to have ballots for every estate that might be regenerated so that the option chosen is the one the residents want. Uh, we absolutely need more local control. And what Haringey are doing is the exact opposite of that. Other councils are starting to learn. Hopefully the mayor will come out against this in the end, like he normally does, like with the Garden Bridge and other things. And we have to keep on campaigning. We have to keep linking up campaigners across London to campaign for the right to decide and the right to run our own home. So thank you so much again for coming and keep up the very, very good work. Thank you. Okay, Le Le uh, thank you everyone. It was That's, uh, Southwark. important for us from, from the Ledbury Estate to be here today and to stand next to you guys. And we're all having the we're all having the same type of battle, which is against a council who generally doesn't care about his about his tenants. At the moment in the Ledbury Estate, we've got residents living without heating, without gas. They have they're not allowed to use the electric heaters. So basically families are freezing in there. We have no choice but to protest right now. Our buildings are unsafe. Our buildings can catch fire and they're not compartmentalized. Whenever we've tried to bring this up with the council, we've had, we've had nothing but battles with them. We're struggling with Harriet Harman, who we've approached her countless times. She came war once just to speak, just so she could have a big press conference and then she could go again. We've approached her countless times, we've approached Corbyn, we've approached the Labour Party. We need people to care about what's happening at places like the Ledbury Estate, what's happening in Haringey, what's happening all over London and all over the country with council, council tenants. 9.30, the 25th of October, Royal Courts of Justice in the Strand. Uh, Tottenham goes for a day out in the Courts of Justice and we urge you to join us because we will be there as a campaign and in the public gallery which is not that big so i'm sure we'll all fit in nice and snugly uh, as we launch the legal arguments against harringay council um, this is really important because this is one we can win this is one we can win for london we are so close politically the sweep in hornsey of wood green of the branch secretaries of the leadership in those uh, in those wards who are in favor of the HDV and now re and have now been replaced tells us what we can expect from councillor selections. Every councillor standing will be scrutinised. Do you support the HDV or not? If they do, they'll go down in selection. We can guarantee that. The second thing is, this fight won't stop with the court case. It has never only been about the court case. It has always been about people in the communities, people on the streets, it's about maintaining pressure, but more important than that, it's been about informing people. Because so many people in so many of the meetings that we've done in Northumberland Park, in Broadwater, in Wood Green, have never been told about this scheme, and that is dishonest. That is basically a lie that is being told to people. People have been told, they've been consulted, they haven't. So I'd urge you all to come support us on October 25th and 26th. Talk to your councillors, engage with your councillors, put pressure on them about the HDV and demand a fair and just process for social housing. Social housing, not social cleansing, has been our chant all the way through this campaign and that's what we will continue to fight for.